The History of the Destruction of Veil and the Dragon. And King Arstages was gathered to his fathers, and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. And Daniel conversed with the king, and was honored above all his friends. Now the Babylonians had an idol called Baal, and there were spent upon him every day twelve great measures of fine flour, and forty sheep, and six vessels of wine. And the king worshipped it, and went daily to adore it. But Daniel worshipped his own God. And the king said unto him, Why dost thou not worship Baal? Who answered and said, because I may not worship idols made with hands, but the living God, who have created the heaven and the earth, and have sovereignty over all flesh. Then said the king unto him, Thinkest thou not that Baal is a living God? Seest thou not how much he eateth and drinketh every day? Then Daniel smiled and said, O king, be not deceived. For this is but clay within and brass without, and did never eat nor drink anything. So the king was wroth, and called for his priest, and said unto them, If you tell me not who this is that devoureth these expenses, ye shall die. But if you can certify me that Baal devoureth them, then Daniel shall die, for he hath spoken blasphemy against Baal. And Daniel said unto the king, Let it be according to thy word. Now the priests of Baal were threescore and ten, besides their wives and children. And the king went with Daniel into the temple of Baal. So Baal's priests said, Lo, we go out, but thou, O king, set on the meat, and make ready the wine, and shut the door fast, and seal it with thine own signer. And tomorrow when thou cometh in, if thou findeth not that Baal have eaten up all, we will suffer death, or else Daniel that speaketh falsely against us. And they little regarded it, for under the table they had made a private entrance, whereby they entered in continually and consumed those things. So when they were gone forth, the king set meats before Baal. Now Daniel had commanded his servants to bring ashes, and those that screwed throughout all the temple in the presence of the king alone. Then went they out and shut the door, and sealed it with the king's signet, and so departed. Now in the night came the priests with their wives and children, and they were wont to do, and did eat and drink up all. In the morning bedtime the king arose, and Daniel with him. And the king said, Daniel, are the seals whole? And he said, Yea, O king, they be whole. And as soon as he had opened the door, the king looked upon the table and cried with a loud voice, Great art thou, O Baal, and with thee is no deceit at all. Then laughed Daniel and held the king that he should not go in and said, Behold now the pavement, and mark well whose footsteps are these. And the king said, I see the footsteps of men, women, and children. And then the king was angry, and took the priest with their wives and children, and showed him the privy doors where they came in, and consumed such things as were upon the table. Therefore the king slew them, and delivered Baal into Daniel's power, who destroyed him and his temple. And in that same place there was a great dragon, which they of Babylon worshipped. And the king said unto Daniel, Will thou also say that this is of brass? Lo, who liveth, and eateth, and drinketh, thou canst not say that he is no living God. Therefore worship him. Then said Daniel unto the king, I will worship the Lord my God, for he is the living God. But give me leave, O king, and I shall slay this dragon without sword or staff. The king said, I give thee leave. Then Daniel took pitch and fat and hair and did seethe them together and made lumps thereof. This he put in the dragon's mouth 
And so the dragon burst in sunder. And Daniel said, Lo, these are the gods you worship. When they of Babylon heard that, they took great indignation and conspired against the king, saying, The king has become a Jew, and he have de destroyed Baal. He have slain the dragon and put the priest to death. So they came to the king and said, Deliver us Daniel, or else we will destroy you and your house. Now when the king saw that they pressed him sore, being constrained, he delivered Daniel unto them. Who cast him into the lion's den, where he was six days? And in the den there were seven lions, and they had given them every day two carcasses and two sheep, which then were not given to them, to the intent that they might devour Daniel. Now there was in jewelry a prophet called Habakkuk, who had made pottage, and had broken bread in a bowl, and was going into the field for to bring it to the reapers. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, Go, carry the dinner that you have into Babylon unto Daniel, who is in the lion's den. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know where the den is. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown, and bare him by the hair of his head, and through the vehemency of his spirit set him in Babylon over the den. And Habakkuk cried, saying, O Daniel, Daniel, take the dinner which God hath sent you. And Daniel said, Thou have remembered me, O God, neither have thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. So Daniel arose and did eat, and the angel of the Lord set Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. Upon the seventh day the king went to bewail Daniel, and when he came to the den, he looked in, and behold, Daniel was sitting. Then cried the king with a loud voice, saying, Great art thou, Lord God of Daniel, and there is none other besides thee. And he drew him out, and cast those that were the cause of his destruction into the den, and they were devoured in a moment before his face.